So Turnip Flats is just east of Belize City, about an hour's boat ride, hour and a half's boat ride from Belize City to the lodge. It's a, it's, it's, it's a pretty nice resort. I mean, you're, you're paying for your guided fishing, but then the lodge itself, I mean, you look out from your room or look out from the lodge, it's just, it's the Caribbean. And it's, it's got a pretty good population of, of permit, bonefish and your resident tarpon plus during the migratory run you get some pretty sizable tarpon through there. So Turnif is a pretty big atoll right it's essentially just a bunch of little islands and mangroves and where you're fishing for the most part are flats and that's where you're gonna find most of your bonefish and your permit right and those flats can extend for you know a pretty long way a mile and then maybe you jump around to another flat but there's flats all the way around that east side of that that atoll and then there's some cuts that you'll fish between some of those little islands of mangroves those are those deep cuts that you know a lot of those resident tarpon are just kind of cruising through from one side or the other but a lot of it is fishing flats whether it be pulled around in a skiff or parking the skiff jumping out and walking for however long you want to walk you can you can cover some miles walking those flats out there. I would say the prime time for going down to Belize for most people is that March to August, September time. Beyond that, it kind of slows down a little bit. I think part of that sometimes has to do with, you know, you start getting November and December and you've got the holidays and families getting together. The fishing may not be as good, it's still doable, but just not as good. I think part of the allure of going to Belize is the ease of travel. Your flight from Colorado, it's only about a four or five hour flight to Belize City. If you're going to a place like Turniff, they'll pick you up at the airport, take you to the dock, wait for everybody to get there, hour and a half, two hour boat ride out to the lodge. There's other destinations where from Belize City, you might stay at that airport, jump on another little commuter in-country flight down to Placencia, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. From there, again, you jump on a boat, maybe 45 minutes out to the lodge itself. So as far as the species down in Belize, you know, a lot of people go down there with the idea of catching or getting that Grand Slam. They want that bonefish, they want that tarpon, they want that permit. One of the coolest things about saltwater fishing is there's a lot of species out there and sometimes you don't know what's gonna be eaten, right? You can get into trigger fish, barracuda, snapper, there was a guy that was down at the lodge when I was at turn of threw into a school of permit, a crap ton of permit. I couldn't tell you how many he said was in that school. Hooked into a fish, was like sweet, got a permit, and ended up being a jack. You go down there with the idea of catching permit tarpon and bonefish, but there's plenty of other species to catch. I think one of the coolest things about saltwater fishing is the stalking aspect. You're cruising around looking for a particular fish to cast to. It's not like trout fishing here where you walk up to a river and you know where those fish are. Most of the fishing you do in Belize on the flats is sight fishing. You're, you're seeing that permit tail sticking up and you're seeing the fins on that bonefish cruising around. Tarpon fishing is a little different in Belize because you are fishing those cuts and you may not be sight fishing. Permit fishing, you may only have, you may get one cast that day. And so it's the challenge as well of of making sure that you're ready to go when you have that opportunity comes so that if you only have that one shot, you make the best of it. As far as the flies go that you're gonna use in a place like Turnoff, I think it comes down to the species itself. A lot of the times your bonefish flies and permit flies can kind of cross over. You fish a lot of shrimp patterns for your bonefish, uh, maybe some small crab patterns. Permit, kind of the same thing, maybe the opposite. You're gonna start with me more of a crab, but then get into some bigger shrimp patterns too. Tarpon really comes down to little bait fish looking patterns that you know, you're gonna sight cast to those tarpon if you see them and kind of strip it along. Or if you're in those deep cuts, kind of full intermediate line, throwing it out. Kind of like streamer fishing, you're throwing it out and just stripping back to you and, and hoping for the best, which is kind of how I got my tarpon. So when I was there in October, with what the lodge had recommended as far as flies go. The most luck I had with bonefish were your, your Christmas Island specials, your Crazy Charlies, and your bonefish bitters. The bonefish bitter was actually developed by one of the guides from Turnoff 
for that area. The flies for permit down there that seemed to work the best at that time were the blue EP crab by Enrico Puglisi and the strong arm crab had some pretty good chases. Tarpon flies down there. The guide seemed to really like, again, the Enrico Puglisi peanut butter. Um, that black and purple was, was the ticket. So when you see a permit tailing and you're ready to make a cast, depending on how what the distance is, permit are a little spooky. So you, you've got to get that cast out right in line, lay it down softly, and kind of let it fall down in front of them. And just like any other fish that you're stalking, you can kind of tell when that fish has kind of seen your fly and made a move. The one thing I learned from those guys down there, they like to talk about, be the crab, be the shrimp. This isn't a streamer. You're not making big, long strips. You're making small strips. Crabs are, are, aren't big, right? They're not gonna move far. Permit are, are a little tough, that you gotta get it pretty close to them, get it in their feeding zone, in their eyesight, and, and hope that you don't spook them. Hope that they're interested, interested enough to at least follow it for a second before they change their mind and head down to Honduras. Bonefish are kind of the same way. Be the shrimp. The bonefish, at, at least at Turniff, aren't as spooky. So you'll you'll come across a school of bonefish and the guide will say, all right, cast over there. You might drop that bonefish fly right in the middle of that school and they're gonna do this and they're gonna come back and then you're gonna start stripping and You'll, you'll get one of those guys to eat. Again, be the shrimp, you know, small little strips. You're not making long strips. So as far as the gear that I took down for, for this trip, there's three main sizes of rods that I, I took. An eight weight is kind of like that great bonefish rod, right? It's gonna be just enough to fight that fish, punch through the wind, lay that fly down nice and gently if you need to. As you get up into that permit, I was fishing more of a nine weight. Again, those fish are a little bit stronger, so having a little more power to, to fight down that fish and get that fish to your hand. Tarpon, rod, I was fishing an 11 weight, which seemed to be the right size. You never know how big that tarpon is that you're gonna hook into, so you don't wanna undergun yourself. You know, maybe in that migratory season, you take a 12 weight just in case you get into to one of the big guys. I took the air salt from Winston in an eight weight. I fished a nine weight Scott Sector for permit. And I fished both a Scott Sector 11 weight and a Salt HD Sage 11 weight. Definitely had fully sealed drags for my reels. I think that's extremely important in the sense that it, that saltwater environment can be pretty erosive on gear and to keep things out of that that drag system and make sure that it's it's working properly so when you do hook into a fish you have a, a good drag to, to help fight that fish. I had a Bauer RX-5 on my 8 weight for my bonefish. I had the Spectrum LT from Sage on my 9 weight sector for those permit and then I was fishing the Ross Evolution R Salt uh, for my tarpon on the 11 weights. As far as the lines go, I was fishing a eight weight bonefish line for your bonefish. I liked the taper of it. I liked the way it presented the fly. Permit, I was fishing again, a floating line. You can use the weight of your flies to help distinguish how quickly you get that fly to settle in front of that fish. And I was fishing a nine weight permit line. Again, I liked the way that it punched. It was a little punchier for me but still laid down the fly nice and gently the way you want to. Tarpon down there, you can go one of two ways. You can fish a floating line, but a lot of the times you're going out and you're fishing these deeper cuts. So these lodges like that full intermediate in that line, not a tip, that full intermediate. So you have that direct connection to that fly. There's no hinge. You get that thing out and you can feel everything as you're stripping in. Leaders and tippet, I, I highly recommend fluorocarbon. It's a much more abrasive resistant material. So if you get around some coral or that fly is rubbing up and down, that, that hard coating of that tarpon's mouth, you, you're less likely to break off. For bonefish, you know, that 10 to 12 pound leader is a good way to go. Maybe having some 10 eight pound tippet if you're going to some spookier fish or throwing some lighter flies and you want to present that fly a little softer. 20 to 16 pound for your permit. Again, there's kind of the, the go-to. I don't like to add tippet to my permit leaders. I like to just fish those straight off. Um, I don't want to have any kind of knot or anything that might fail. Tarpon, 
you know, you don't want to go straight 80 pound fluorocarbon, right? There are some pre-made leaders from Rio that have a class and shock section to them. So a 60 shock, 20 class is a good one. That shock section is the very tip of your leader. It takes that initial hit. Then you get back into your class section, which is 20 pound. And the reason why I like that 20 pound is because if for some reason that tarpon's getting chased by a shark or ducks into the mangrove somewhere, you can point at that fish and break off and that fish can get off and do it and live to see another day. So tarpon, you know, that 60, 20, 60, 30, or even an 80, 20, 80, 30 is where I would suggest. I also like a fresh leader every day. Reason being, again, you have very limited opportunity for some of these fish and you don't want to break off that permit that you hooked because you used a leader yesterday, from yesterday that might have gotten nicked by a piece of coral or something. So when I was in turn off the clothing that I packed, for me, I like a, a hooded long sleeve shirt. Spend enough time working on a golf course and being in the sun all day that I don't need all that sun anymore. So a free fly hooded, sh lightweight hooded shirt, Solar Flex from Sims are great options that I really, really like. They breathe really well, they dry really quickly. Same with the pants. I was, I wore pants, you know, some guys will wear shorts, but again, I've seen enough sun in my life. Uh, lightweight pant from Freefly, um, their breeze pant was my favorite down there. I had a pair of flat sneakers or you, you know, you the, the little booties that you can get from Orvis or Sims um, for when I got out and walk weighted the flats. Just again, you've got an ocean full of critters. Some of them are pokey and dangerous. That being said, I, I learned real fast from some guys to not take steps when you're walking the flats, shuffle your feet as you, as you walk rather than take a step that way, if you come across a stingray, you rather you spook it before you step on it, or you kick a sea urchin before you step on it. I had a really nice pair of sunglasses, whether, you know, depending on how you are with sunglasses, if you're going to salt water a lot, you might want that blue lens. I took down a blue lens. I also took down a green mirror lens from Be Heal that I thought transferred over really well from your flats to your fresh water, so kind of a dual sunglass without having to get both. I chose a blue lens for my sunglasses and a green mirror lens for my sunglasses because it lets less light in down in a tropical area. It's much brighter and you've got light coming in from all different directions. And it, it just it just lets a little bit less in. It's a little bit less stressful on your eyes. As far as taking gear out on the skiff with the guide, I would recommend having some kind of dry bag to carry whatever gear you might want. Extra pair of sunglasses, rain jacket, sunscreen. Also having either a waterproof pack or a waterproof fly box with you so that when you jump out of the skiff, you can carry the things with you that you might need for a couple hours of fishing. I had a a waterproof hip pack that I was able to throw some tippet, some leaders, box of flies in there, a good pair of pliers. For me, I was able to get all of my gear into clothing and whatnot into just a duffel bag. And then my rods and reels, I was able to carry on the plane with a Dakota rod reel case. I would take all the necessities you think you might need, including sunscreen, bug spray. I didn't know about the bugs down there being the way they were, and I did not take bug spray with me. I wish I had. Sunscreen for sure. I like the face sticks, man. You can put, grab that thing, wipe it on where you need to. It's not getting all over your hands. Your hands aren't getting all greasy. The other thing that the lodge will do, like Turniff, is they allowed or took some of their clients to a I guess you could stay like a market or grocery store before they left Belize City and got on the boat to get a few snacks that they might want to have in their room. What's the best story, whether it's a funny story or an epic story that comes to mind when you uh, think about that place? So there's one story that comes to mind when I think about Turniff and it was the fight on that tarpon. It was at the end of the day, it was like four o'clock, I hooked into that thing, started fighting it, and all hell broke loose. Reel fell apart, I had to put it back together. My buddy that was with me, as I was putting the reel back together, was holding that line tight with his hand. That happened a few times, it was just complete freaking chaos. 
that's part of the saltwater fishing game that I love too. Like, you never know what's gonna happen. You something's gonna happen, and it's gonna be great. It's just complete chaos. It's it's, it's great, um, especially when all hands come together to make it happen. I could not have landed that tarpon without the guide or my buddy Mike. Mike kept that line tight while I was fixing my reel. The guide did what he had to do to make sure we got that fish to hand. It took 45 minutes, but it happened. And at the end of it, it was a team effort. And that was super, super cool. I couldn't have, I, I wouldn't have had that grand slam without those two guys. Good work, brother. Good work. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>